Okay, so this is problem number 59 from chapter 9 on phasers. And this is a section on node voltage, the node voltage method in the frequency domain. And you'll notice that this chapter is, re is very short, or this section in the book is really short. And the reason it's really short is because all of the laws for, um, all of the rules for Kirchhoff's laws that applied in the uh, time domain also transfer into the frequency domain. There is no change, so there's nothing new to write about. It's just that instead of using, um, now we have passive circuit elements that have a, um, a, a frequency or a frequency element to it, so now we are dealing with imaginary numbers. That's the only difference. But imaginary numbers are just numbers, and so treat them like numbers and you'll be just fine. The circuit that we're looking at is um, a capacitor, and that capacitor is in series or in parallel with, um, well, first of all, it has impedance of minus J8, and that's in, ser in parallel with a series connected inductor with impedance of J4 and a dependent current source with 2.4 times I delta. And I delta is the current that goes through the capacitor. Now, that is then in parallel with a 5 ohm resistor, which is in parallel with a, um, a current, an independent current source with value 10 plus J10. There we go. So, when you first look at this, we know that the instructions say to find um, this phaser, which is the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor. And um, we want to find it both in polar form and in rectangular form. So, when we, and, and the instructions say specifically to use node voltage. It, I would have anyways because the way it's constructed, it just makes sense. So, originally, when I first looked at that, I said, well, okay, so I have a node here and a node here, and this is my ground. But when you start to write your node equations, you end up with, taking this minus this and you realize, oh, there's no resistor there. So this must be a supernode. And it is, it's a supernode. So remember this is just a piece of wire, so that puts this right there at that point. So this is really the same node, and this of course is part of that node. So this circuit has only um, one node to consider for um, node voltage at V out. And naturally, we're going to put that as the ground node. So remember, even if you didn't recognize that, like I didn't, because you just look at that and eyeball it, say, okay, node one, node two. When you do your math and set up your node equations, if you end up with a node minus a node with no resistor in between, then that node is a super node. And it's, real, it's electrically the same as whatever node you want to consider. So it's either electrically the same as this or electrically the same as that. It doesn't matter, it's the same point. So, there we go. Now, the, all the laws um, that have applied in the past still apply in the frequency domain. So, let's go ahead and set up our node voltage equation at V out. Remember, the node voltage method uses KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, even though it's called voltage. So. Everything um, that we're doing is the sum of all the currents in and out of that V out node have to sum up to zero. Conservation of current law. So node voltage at V out. I'm going to take V out to be right there. Ground to be right there. And so we start with this node. No, actually, let's start from the farthest node. So this is really electrically the same as here. So that's going to be V out over minus J8 plus this node right here, V out minus 2.4 I delta, all that over J4 plus V out over 5. And then we have this current source going into the node, which makes it a minus. So minus 10 plus J10, all that has to sum to zero. So remember, it's the sum of current loss of this. Since this is a current, there's nothing to divide it by. Just take the current, minus it out. 
So this, this equation essentially says current in and out of that node is equal to zero. Now we have one equation and two unknowns. We need a second equation, and that second equation has come from the definition of I delta. I delta is this current through that capacitor. Therefore, I delta is equal to V out over minus J A. So what I'm going to do is erase that I delta and put in its substituted value right here. So this is really V out. The out over minus J. The out over minus J eight. That's what that really is. Now, the hardest part that I had in doing this problem was the calculator because when I entered it into the, my calculator, I kept forgetting to wrap my denominator in parentheses. And so it would calculate this as V out minus V out over, so it would calculate, basically do this calculation as one over minus J and the eight. And that is certainly not equal to one mi over minus J eight. Very different. And so I kept getting the wrong answer and then I realized, oh, I forgot to wrap it the parentheses. So when you do that, be sure to wrap your denominator in parentheses so that the J and the 4 or the J and its real component get divided together in the denominator. And also remember that this do, for this part, you need to do 2.4 divided by, again, wrap the denominator into minus J8. And then that result gets divided by J4. And then the rest is algebra. And I claim that once you do this algebra, which I'm not going to do because you're all engineers and you need to know algebra. So I'm assuming my audience knows algebra. And once you do that, I claim that V out, so you bring that to the other side, that's going to be minus 10 minus J10, right? So that is equal to minus 10 minus j 10 factor out of v out okay to give you some key numbers to look at when you factor a v out you should have 1 over minus j 8 v out is right here plus 1 over j 4 plus this number divided by j4 that will be so do negative 2.4 divided by negative J8, get a result there, divide that result by J4, and you should come up with minus 0 0.075. If you didn't, then check your um, parentheses. This here is plus 1.5. That should equal negative 10 minus J10. So once you take that result, get a polar, a rectangular form from that, divide that by this, I claim that you should come up with a polar answer of 80, angle 90, and the rectangular form is 80J. And that is what Spice tells me my answer should be. So, in case you guys can't see it, because I have such a small board, Again, that's 80 angle 90 for the color for it, or 80J for the rectangle. Okay, good luck, and make sure that you're not just skipping to the answer and that you're trying it first before you check the answer, and be sure to share the video and like the Facebook.